Mr Shipton, I um, appreciate you've taken over the reins in recent times this year, but um, you refer to a lost decade. And uh, however, in that lost decade, we've seen systemic, serious failures in the finance sector that has done a lot of harm to a lot of Australians. Um, and in talking about cultural change, I'm sure you'd agree that to bring about any cultural change in any organisation, large or small, private, public, uh, that cultural change has to come from the top and the leadership. Um, so don't you agree from that, and, and, and the leadership has to be accountable for it um, in terms of bringing about that change, or in has to be accountable for the failures of the culture in the finance sector. Don't, where do you see ASIC's accountability um, in terms of ASIC's culture and uh, in terms of their connection to these systemic failures? Well, Ms Banks, I, thank you very much for that question because if we, which we are, advocates for uh, cultural reform and renewal, uh, then we, of course, need to lead by example. This is something that I'm firmly committed to. Uh, that ASIC and the men and women at ASIC uh, are exemplars of the professional mindset uh, that we are expecting of the financial services sector. Uh, and that is something I'm firmly committed to. Uh, I must admit I have every confidence that uh, ASIC will continue to be uh, an example of fine professionalism. Uh, the men and women uh, at this organisation uh, are firmly committed to the challenges that we've been discussing and that are confronting. I can give you my personal assurance that these fine people work as hard as they possibly can to address the issues. They feel the hurt that you feel. They feel the con they are confronted as you are confronted. Um, they are not uh, sitting in an ivory tower. They are firmly committed every single day to doing what they believe is just and what's right. And I see my role and my fellow commissioners see their role as harnessing that very positive energy inside uh, the organisation to make us even more efficient, make us even more professional and make us even more effective in confronting the challenges before us. But you also mentioned in your question about um, the failure uh, in recent years of the financial services sector. I am surprised, having spent a significant time working and regulating and observing uh, overseas financial sectors, that the lessons learned from those other jurisdictions were not applied sooner in Australia, that those lessons were not embraced sooner by the sector's leaders. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we are where we are and it is what it is and hence why there is an enormous urgency right now for these leaders and all of the men and women in finance to embrace this concept of professionalism that you asked me about. Okay. Um, so, but in terms of um, everyone in ASIC uh, being committed, that, that's great, but have, have you done a sort of after action review uh, within ASIC in terms of um, ASIC's accountability and responsibility where these systemic failures have occurred? Sure. What I have um, done in the last four months um, is firstly make an assessment uh, of what I believe are the fundamental challenges in the sector. Secondly, an assessment of how ASIC is positioned now and can deploy into the future into meeting those challenges. Uh, and those two parallel tracks are absolutely fundamental so that we can, then, um, we can then respond accordingly. I've also been very minded of uh, parliamentary reports um, and also the uh, capability review uh, into ASIC, which provide excellent guidance and excellent direction, strategic and tactical, uh, for our organisation. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier in, a, in response to an earlier question, we are engaging with the government on some ideas that we believe will position the organisation to respond to the challenges that you rightly, as a committee, are concerned about and have identified. And we have presented these ideas uh, to the government uh, and I'd be happy to outline them 
uh, to you in greater detail if time permits. But amongst other things, they would, in response to an issue raised by the Deputy Chair, provide for greater supervisory focus on the very financial institutions that touch most Australians uh, and would focus on issues that have been of systemic concern, including conflicts of interests for many years. Okay. We want and we will be part of the solution. And that's something that we're firmly committed to. So yes, we are forward looking. Yes, we are responding to the challenges uh, that we are confronting. And yes, we are looking at making sure that we learn from experiences, read and apply the recommendations that come from reports such as parliamentary committees and the capability review so that we can be the best that we can possibly be. Okay, can I just refer you to a um, case of Westpac uh, where it was reported that Westpac, uh, of the four big banks, Westpac, um, seem most resistant to ASIC and the laws that ASIC administrates. Um, and uh, these were uh, noted down in notes where in 2015 ASIC had approached um, Westpac's chairman after raising concerns with uh, Brian Hartzer and other executives that the way the bank was issuing credit card increases could cause financial hardship. Now ASIC took two years, there was no action taken in relation to that reporting and ASIC took, and Westpac um, didn't follow it up until um, two years later to address the issue and only after ASIC had threatened to take legal action. I put it to you that um, don't you agree that ASIC should, was part of the problem there in terms of not following up earlier, like to wait, you know, to do the report, ask the questions, two years passes. Um, so in terms of those reporting requirements, that's where that accountability has to be evenly balanced. Don't you, don't you agree that uh, that could have been done a lot better? And the second part of that question is, how do you think that scenario, if that were to take place today, how do you think that would look differently to how it did back in 2015? Um, the, uh, I will ask my colleague, Mr Sadat, to respond on the particular detail of that case, but because uh, I believe that you're getting at an important issue as regards timeliness and responsiveness of ASIC. I, I, will, I will at least give you my viewpoint. My, my viewpoint is, is that we will move as quickly as we possibly can in situations that are confronting and concerning. Uh, I am not briefed on the particular details of that, that matter at hand, but I would have absolute confidence uh, that we exercised our different tools at different times as we saw appropriate. Um, unfortunately, and I've been a regulator now for quite some time, and I've been observing uh, regulatory uh, practice, and I've been a regulated person myself. Unfortunately, um, even as a regulator, we don't get outcomes that we would like in the speed that we would uh, wish them to be executed. But that said, uh, I, I am sure uh, that in these cases, what we would do is explore as quickly as possibly all of the tools that we have and apply them as quickly as possibly. And that uh, is something that unfortunately takes longer than the average person may like. But nonetheless, there are steps uh, to be followed, uh, procedures to be respected, um, but let me assure you, please let me assure you, that we are committed, when we identify problems, to solve them as quickly as we can. That's my assurance to you moving forward, so that if a scenario came along, it may not seem on its face that you may think that we're not moving as quickly, but trust me, my commitment is that we will move as quickly as we can using the tools that we have, and if necessary, those tools will become more apparent and more public as you move in serious situations to enforcement outcomes. Uh, yeah, just think, make think, one oh, comment sorry, before think, passing to Mr. I Sidney. think that really addresses that, uh, my question, okay. uh, your answer in relation okay. to that, that. But in just Thanks one, for one final question in terms of the, the same matter. Um, Westpac's general manager of credit um, on the same matter, Mr. Malcolm, um, told 
the committee that they <coughs> told the commission, I should say, that there was not a that there was not a problem with Westpac's culture, but rather its processes. And you, Mr. Shipton, talk a lot about um, self-regulation in relation to the banks, and understandably that there, it should be their responsibility, and that there's a need for, for professionalism and them to change as well. Um, but when asked by um, Commissioner Ken Kenneth Hayne how Westpac would respond uh, to requests from ASIC in the future, he said, and I quote, I think we would obey the law unless we made the case otherwise. So my question to you is, how do <clears throat> you, um, how, how much confidence have you in, in relation to that culture change happening when it's aligned to your expectations of the degree of culture change that needs to happen in terms of self-regulation? There is a tremendous amount of work to be done by the financial institutions, a mm -hmm. tremendous amount. Mm -hmm. um, and those vignettes, those case studies that you mentioned are very good ones uh, for the industry more broadly to reflect upon. Um, I have uh, said publicly, and I will say again today, that there is far too a legalistic approach uh, by many organisations and many people inside those financial organisations when it comes to responding to issues and to questions. Yes, of course, legal processes are important. We take those legal processes very importantly as well. But there is a need for a more professional, a more human-minded, a, mu a more community-oriented response uh, by financial institutions. And there is much work to be done. And Another point of assurance for you, I will continue both publicly and directly one-on-one -on -one, to advocate for that reform, that improvement and that change because the nation, the, the community in this country desperately deserves a financial sector that it can trust, that is servicing its needs, servicing the community and the society as opposed to wrapping itself up in legalistic lang language and in often cases, to be honest, in often cases, obstructionist response, which in our view is totally unacceptable. Thank you.